time now for Turn the Page with Paige, our children's book series brought to you by Goddard Schools. We sit down with local authors and illustrators to learn the story behind the bedtime stories that children are enjoying. Hey, speaking of bedtime, brushing your teeth, getting your jammies on, going to bed on time, those are all rules that children have to learn. Dennis the Monster has to learn his own set of rules. In fact, there is an entire book of rules. Author Brian Gerline brings us the book of rules with laugh out loud interactive style and a monster named Dennis. Brian joins us in studio today. Thank you for being here in from Kansas City. Thanks for making the drive to St. Louis. All the way from Chief's Kingdom. Happy to be here. So glad. Glad to, to have you. Well, a book of rules and a monster named Dennis, I have to admit, seems kind of like a random combo, Super but this random. is a hit. Where did this idea come from? Yeah, um, I wanted to have like the scariest monster name possible. So <laughs> Dennis, no, I'll get to that later. But I was actually uh, a special education paraprofessional at a, an elementary school in Kansas City. And during gym class, in the weirdest, best way the author's experience, I heard this voice in my head so the opening of the book that's kind of been the same ever since. This book has rules. You must follow the rules. If you break the rules, and then I was like, what voice in my head? What will happen if we break the rules? And it was like, oh, I need to figure out this, like the mechanics of this game. So it sounds like it's an interactive uh, book that would work great for like groups of kids. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, oh, there's a monster that will eat them if they break the rules. It's like, okay. so. We're going to follow the rules, and if we break the rules, we get eaten by a monster. Sounds like something out of the 19th century. I need to make sure this is like the tone of this is right, and then it's like it's silly and playful. So I was like, I need the most anodyne, non monsterly name ever. Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Yeah, Hello, Andrew Dennis. Dennis. So that's basically the storyline, right? So you are going along trying not to get eaten by Dennis. Yes. That terrifying monster. Yeah, we have to try not to die um, <laughs> while. At bedtime. Why do or kids like, like this? I don't. Well, okay. So like, I have an almost five year old and a two and a half year old, and I'm like on the daily, I'm chasing them around the house, like pretending to be a lion or a wolf or a bear, and there's just like this, this thrill kids get with like, I know it's pretend, I know it's fake, um, but there's that element of danger that's just so exciting, um, and so like throughout the book, we have these kids that Tom Knight, the illustrator, did, and it was his idea to have a group of kids throughout the book and we have to follow the rules of the book. It goes from like high energy, mm -hmm. gross motor stuff. For instance, like the first rule is you must sit on the floor. Well, you can't sit there. That's not right. Find a new spot. So kids are getting up mm -hmm. and I had 160 kids doing this at a library <laughs> last week in Kearney. Um, super wild stuff. There's a bear hug at, like toward the beginning. They have to sit crisscross applesauce and then applesauce here, which makes no sense. Um, and then it kind of like winds down to like lower energy and more mindfulness. And I was going to ask, what is the goal at the end other than not, not getting right. eaten? Yeah, I feel like um, it's kind of like getting ready to do anything educational or wind down. Like at bedtime, we mm -hmm. want to go from like crazy, silly nighttime energy or like kids that are just wound up in school and like go through this the series of tasks that they have to do to kind of like become more mindful at the end. The last um, legitimate rule they have to follow is everyone closes their eyes and like feels their heartbeat, listens to the room, breathes together. So it's like, and at the end it's, it's like, ah, we're ready to go. And there's this little mantra that I really love. Um, the kids have to repeat, I am ready to listen. I am ready to learn. I am not Dennis food. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a little journey you go through. It's a lot of I think every parent, every teacher wants to hear their kids say, I'm ready to listen, I'm ready to learn. 100%. Rules, that's just one lesson that kids have to learn as mm -hmm. they're growing up. Another one is how to be resilient. That's something that you learned firsthand in this process, right? Yes. Um, Paige, I might be the most rejected author you've ever had uh, in this um, I don't know, I might segment. be close second. <laughs> I don't know, like, so I, I got 600 rejections on my path to find my first literary agent. So for people who aren't familiar with publishing, yeah. you are trying to, you've written these books and you're sending these books to people saying, hey, I have this great idea, mm -hmm. publish it, work with me, let's make this happen. Yeah. And 600 people said no. Yeah, so I was trying <clears throat> traditional publishing, which is you have to have a literary agent. And so 
over the course of like two years, and that's abnormal by the way, like most people that pursue traditional publishing don't rack up that many, but I had like something like 25 different books <clears throat> for 85 to maybe 90 different agents and editors. And I told myself at the beginning that I was gonna be a children's book author and like I wasn't gonna take no for an answer. So I knew that like, even if they're telling me, you know, a story that might not be true, you're no good, mm -hmm. you're rejected. I had a more interesting story captivating me that I had something of value, my voice mattered, mm -hmm. I had good ideas and it was only a matter of time before someone gave in and said yes. Did it feel a little good that someone had read your story to even say no? Yes, if you oh think my about gosh. It that way? Yeah, and, and like, and now I, I mean, I still get rejected, but it's now it's like editors at like major publishing houses reading my stuff. I have two books out right now, and it's like, ah, I still get, I still get the same amount of giddy that people are reading my work, mm -hmm. and um, it just feels special to even put your work out there and mm -hmm. try. Yeah. So, yeah, right. You're at least trying. Some yeah. people, they, the idea is still stuck in their head. Yeah, and I love working with the people that are kind of on the edge of like, I want to be an author, but I'm not really sure. I run a story coaching service to critique other picture book author, uh, authors' work. And uh, I love like giving back to people with all the crazy lessons I learned in the process of getting 600 rejections. So. Well, you do have another job too. You are a teacher in the Kansas City area. How do you incorporate your book of rules into your classroom? Or maybe how do you see your cohorts doing that? I am constantly threatening my freshmen with Dennis and that if they don't write their essays, he, they will be eaten. Do, no, do freshmen uh, still fall for Dennis too? No, no. I mean like, and it's, it's funny because I'm like kind of in two worlds because I'm like a high school English teacher. So I'm writing kids books that yeah. high school kids aren't really super interested in picture books. But I have like the book, um, like image and like photos of Dennis around the room and they know I'm an author. So like I... I'm super transparent with my kids. Like, what does it mean to be an author? What are authors doing? Like, when we're writing stuff as, as a class, like, wh what does revision mean? And what does revision look like in my life as an author? So it's, that's where it really gets blended in elementary schools, though. And what I get to see online, people doing with it, uh, art teachers are having people create their own monsters, like, create their own versions of Dennis, try to uh, come up with an alternate ending, like, what can Dennis eat except, uh, not eat the book of rules at the end. And uh, my favorite thing though is like kindergarten teachers using like a morning meditation mantra. I'm ready to listen, I'm ready to learn. I'm not Dennis Food, I yeah. love that. Um, we have to go shortly, but a few more questions I wanna mm -hmm. fit in because I wanna congratulate you for being a 2023, 2024 Missouri Building Block Gosh. Award so nominee. Crazy. How can viewers help you lock that in, win that? Yeah, uh, I, I feel honored to even be included I think I'm the only Missouri okay. author in the mix, but participating libraries um, will have ballots and it's kind of like a kid's choice award. So ages zero to six can vote until January 15th, okay. their favorite book. And I have it on good authority that if they vote for the book of rules, um, they won't get eaten. They're not gonna get eaten. Yeah, they get a free pass. What else do you have in the work? Surely another book coming yeah. out. Yeah, um, so a non book of rules related book will come out in 2025 published by Little Brown and my illustrator. I'm so excited to work with her. Uh, Jen Harney is hilarious. She just did something with Amy Dykeman um, about uh, it's when the, when the dinos how, to, how the dinosaurs went extinct, a safety guide. So her like visual comedy is, is perfect with mine. It's about a bear that has to hibernate and everything in the story is going wrong. Mm. Um, and it's, it's a ton of fun. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Finally, I have to end on this question. Your recommendation for another children's book from another author or illustrator, mm -hmm. either from your childhood or what your kids are reading. I like wolves a lot. My opinion about wolves and books, narrative stories is like, is your, if your work in progress is sucking, if you're writing a, a young adult novel, toss in a wolf. <laughs> Makes it instantly better. And people kind of make fun of me about it on Twitter. It's mostly silly. But so last year, the winner for the Missouri Building Block award was Wolf Boy by Andy Harkness and it's so good he does the art um, in virtual reality like he's in a digital studio adding texture and light and color and it just came out with it he just came out with a sequel follow-up it's called Wolf Boy is not scared except that he totally is scared so 
Okay. Tons of fun. If you like wolves, check it out. Wolves. Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Paige. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today as well for Turn the Page with Paige. We'll see you again next time.